we can uh, support uh, are we in Ukraine and how the international community can support the Ukrainian community now that the full scale war is in that year. Uh, let's start with a brief introduction. Uh, my name is Anton. I am programs coordinator of Wikimedia Ukraine. I lead Wikimedia Ukraine's programs, so everything from content campaigns to community support to other work. As a volunteer, I'm also an editor and administrator of Ukrainian Wikipedia. And some of you may know me as a member of the steering committee of the Wikimedia CE. Uh, this session is uh, 25 minutes long, I think, uh, and I have a presentation that will last for about 20 minutes, and I'm hoping to save some space for Q&A at the end. If there are uh, more questions than we have time for, I will be around online today and in the following days, so please feel free to approach me. Uh, I wish I had presented this session in person in Katowice. I had hoped to present this session in person and be there in person with you, but I am not currently allowed to travel outside Ukraine as a military aged man, so I am presenting from Kyiv. Uh, but despite this limitation, I am still highly privileged. I haven't lost my home, I haven't lost my job, my family remains intact, and uh, millions of Ukrainians have had it much worse. Uh, especially those uh, who have died defending Ukraine. Uh, out of the many thousands of fallen Wikimedians, uh, uh, out of the many thousands of fallen Ukrainian defenders, uh, I would like us to honor the five uh, Wikimedians who were killed or died defending Ukraine and defending freedom more broadly. You can see them on these two slides. So it is Mikola Kravchenko, a historian and Ukrainian Wiki Wikipedia contributor who was killed in combat in March 2022. Uh, it is Volodymyr Vakulenko, prominent Ukrainian writer and Ukrainian Wikipedia contributor who was killed while in Russian occupation in uh, some time between March and May 2022. Uh, it is Yuri Ushchai who was an uh, who was a historian, uh, an administrator of Russian Wikipedia and a contributor to Ukrainian Wikipedia, who joined the armed forces and uh, and was killed in a Russian seven in March 2024. Uh, it is Valery Samarhey, who died very uh, young uh, in, uh, uh, in 2024, when he was just 20, uh, 24 years old, and who used to participate in Wiki Marathons as a student uh, around seven years ago. Uh, and it is Volodymyr Hula, who was, uh, who was 30 years old when he died, who was also a Ukrainian Wikipedia contributor and arbitration committee member on Ukrainian Wikipedia and uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and and who was part of the armed forces of Ukraine. So let us honor their memory and uh, their sacrifice. Uh, but now I want to talk uh, more about uh, 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 now. Now I would uh, I, I would like to start with with with, with very brief background, uh, just just to give you uh, a bit of context on where the where the war uh, stands today. Uh, what is the status of uh, of Russia's war in Ukraine right now? So as I mentioned, uh, the war is in its third year and it shows no signs of ending soon. All right, uh, Ukraine has uh, Ukraine has held up after the most difficult first couple of months, and uh, life goes on despite the war. Businesses are running, people are celebrating birthdays, the comedians are gathering for conferences, uh, as you can see uh, on this slide. Uh, the comedians are gathering to edit Wikipedia in in bomb shelters uh, and in other places as well. Uh, but it is getting harder as the invaders are trying to where Ukraine out. Uh, so what, what can we do about it is the topic of uh, the topic of my today's uh, session. Uh, first, I want to give a bit of uh, a recap, a bit of background on the first days and months of the war and uh, the role of Wikipedia uh, in the first days and months of the war. Some of this I presented at previous conferences. But it is useful to have a brief recap. Uh, so Wikipedia has been a vital source of information for, for readers, for, for millions of people. Uh, when uh, Russia started its full-scale uh, invasion of Ukraine in February of 2022, uh, readers were desperately looking for information. Uh, so 
everything from general context of the world to specific life saving advice. Uh, audiences for all kinds of media, for news media, immediately skyrocketed, and Wikipedia readership also grew quite significantly. Uh, but at the same time, increased uh, readership put a strain on the volunteer community. At the very time when Wikipedia was of the least priority to many of the volunteers who were directly affected by the war, who had to flee their homes, who had to save their families. Uh, so, uh, so user activity decreased uh, quite a lot uh, in the first months of the war. Uh, so, for example, we saw a 40% decrease year of the year in uh, March of 2022. As the situation did uh, become more stable two months into the war start uh, after Ukraine liberated the regions around Kyiv, the capital city. As the situation, uh, while remaining difficult, difficult, uh, more or less stabilized. Uh, the community has been more resilient uh, than one might have feared, despite these challenges, for multiple reasons. Uh, many people have continued to volunteer for Wikipedia while in Ukraine as a way to be useful and uh, keep the element of sanity. We published uh, stories uh, about uh, uh, some of these people uh, in the first days of the war. You can see two stories on the slides uh, and the two interviews for these stories of volunteers who continued to edit Wikipedia in the first days of the war. Uh, Vyacheslav Mamon and Antanana, both of them are present at Wikimania in Katowice, so you can you can meet them in person uh, as well if you are there, in, uh, uh, if you're there on the ground. Uh, but also Ukrainian uh, Ukrainians living abroad doubled down on their activity in the first uh, days and months of the war, which was quite helpful. And there were different forms of coordinated response to the war. Uh, some of the responses included uh, fast track decisions uh, among the volunteer communities. So for example, we had um, quite a helpful practice of uh, appointing temporary administrators and a simplified procedure to fight uh, disinformation and vandalism. Uh, this procedure, uh, this practice remains relevant in Ukrainian Wikipedia, and I'm hoping to uh, to have a uh, to have a separate session about this, a separate lightning talk at the meeting this year. So you will be able to learn more about that then. Uh, and we also had quite a lot of support from the international volunteer community, global, for example, global administrators helping uh, fight destructive edits on uh, Ukrainian Wikipedia. And there was also quite a lot of institutional support in the first days of the full-scale war, uh, support from the Wikimedia Foundation, which, uh, for example, overall tech maintenance, um, maintenance uh, we didn't have to worry about hacking attacks um, impacting Wikipedia in Ukraine, for example, and a lot of other support. Uh, Wikimedia Ukraine, the organization I represent, has been working with specific community members to help with specific needs. and. We also had quite a lot of support from Wikimedia organizations from Europe uh, and beyond Wik Wikimedia Poland, Wikimedia Germany, uh, quite a lot of other organizations supported relocation of people, provide information support and much more. So uh, we are quite grateful for that. So in a nutshell, to sum up, in the first days of the war, uh, the, there were factors that have helped keep Ukrainian Wikipedia and the community up and running. Uh, these factors have been existing structures and barriers, community resilience, and institutional support from both Ukraine uh, and beyond. Uh, but I would like to talk more about the situation and challenges today. Uh, today, Wikipedia remains a vital source for people during the war. There are no huge spikes in attention like at the beginning, but there is an appetite for verified information amidst challenged media ecosystems. So for example, there are a lot of there is a lot of unverified information in Ukrainian in, in, in Ukraine's media ecosystem. Uh, telegram channels uh, are quite popular and not not all of them are uh, not all of them ha have the highest journalistic standards. And Wikipedia is a Wikipedia is an island of uh, verified information, so to speak, in this in this context. Uh, but at the same time at the same time, community members are, con uh, are continuing to be affected by the war and its impact in a lot of ways, both direct and indirect. Uh, we conducted a poll of, for Ukrainian Wikimedians just before Wikimania, uh, and 70% of people from our poll, poll report 
uh, reduced ability to contribute compared to the pre-war period. Uh, the biggest single reason right now, so uh, this poll uh, reflects the a situation, uh, uh, the situation as of July 2024, the biggest single reason why volunteers are not able to contribute as much is uh, regular power outages, which are uh, caused by Russian attacks on civilian energy infrastructure. Uh, and I will talk more about that in a minute. But other notable reason, reasons why people cannot contribute or can contribute uh, less than before the war uh, are uh, reduced income because of the war and direct impact of, of, of the hostilities, right? Direct impact of the, of the Russian military attacks. Uh, to illustrate how a power outage looks like, uh, looks like here's a photo of the, exa the exact spot I'm speaking with you from right now. My, my workplace at Wikimedia Ukraine's office uh, in fall 2022 when we had first uh, power blackouts. Uh, caused by Russian attacks on energy infrastructure. Uh, overall, uh, our research, our polls show that there are four big, four big challenges for Wikimedia community members right now. I just mentioned the, the first one is uh, power outages. Uh, with, 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 uh, with electric power outages, people have even less time and resources to volunteer for Wikipedia. As one of our respondents put it, if you don't often have power, uh, if, if you don't often have uh, have energy, you have to uh, uh, prioritize your job rather than uh, editing Wikipedia. And there are also indirect impacts. Uh, you can uh, you can imagine going through a heat wave without air conditioning, uh, which has a negative impact on one's cognitive abilities. And uh, as I can personally attest to. Uh, and uh, the second challenge is the economic impact of the war. So people report having their income reduced uh, as a result of the economic impact uh, of the war. And that means that they have uh, to work more uh, to, to, to make up for lost income. They have more stress, some, sometimes it's both, and therefore they have less time and less resources for contributing to Wikipedia. As one person put it uh, quite simply, high stress level impacts my productivity. And then there is also a challenge uh, of relocation. So millions of Ukrainians have had to flee their homes in the first days uh, of the war. Uh, and some people have been able to return. So myself personally, I, I have been able to return to Kyiv uh, two months after the start of the war. But 20% of the comedians from our pro haven't been able to return home as of July 2024. Uh, th this means, uh, as one person put, put it, less free time because they need to, to learn a new language, adjust to a new culture. They lack typical support structure from relatives and friends. Uh, and there are also other uh, different indirect impacts. So one person said that they lost access to their personal library and archives, which remained in, in the front line city of Kharkiv, and this person have had to move abroad. Uh, and then the fourth uh, challenge uh, is uh, mobilization, uh, right? Uh, uh, people are joining the army, whether they whether voluntarily or, uh, or, 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 or men are being, uh, men are getting called up. Uh, and uh, uh, and while some people can still contribute from from the army, uh, some people can can have vacations and uh, and participate in Wikimedia events. It is the exception, not the rule, of course. And uh, uh, since we all know there is a big gender gap in Wikimedia, uh, in the Wikimedia community, something we have been uh, fighting for the last years, but have not been able to have not be able to overcome both in Ukraine and and worldwide. This has mobilization has a bigger impact, right? Because because men are uh, impacted by by mobilization more, and this has also had a considerable impact on uh, Wikimedia Ukraine as an organization, as some key people were either caught up or voluntarily joined the army, uh, both in the early days, but also in 2024. Uh, there are some silver linings to. Uh, to all of this, uh, of course, uh, j j just to just to illustrate um, from our poll, um, one person said that 
it is because of the words that they joined Wikipedia properly, right? Because they realized uh, it is more important than ever for people to have quick access to information in their native language. Uh, it is it is a boon for Ukrainian Wikipedia, as some people who had edited uh, had contributed to Russian Wikipedia or other language editions before the full scale war uh, switched to contributing to Ukrainian Wikipedia uh, since the start of the war. Uh, and as one person put it simply, uh, editing Wikipedia keeps me uh, together. Editing Wikipedia helps, uh, helps uh, keep mental sanity. Uh, it is it is a welcome distraction in in difficult conditions. So, so there is that. But uh, since the overall situation is uh, quite difficult, uh, I want to talk uh, for a couple of minutes about uh, how, what can we do and and what can what can help uh, at this point. Uh, so uh, the first uh, point I want to make is uh, just how to how to approach even how to even approach helping how to think about helping. As of 2024, right, uh, as we are in the third year of the war, uh, there are much fewer immediate emergencies today where people, for example, lose their home right now. Uh, it can happen. Uh, there are still Russian rocket attacks on Ukraine every day, uh, including on non frontwide cities, including on Kyiv. So it can happen that that people, uh, it can ha happen that a person loses their home one day. But but it, it doesn't happen at a mass scale uh, in non frontwide regions and among the Wikimedian community. So what we need to do is we need to think about what it takes to keep volunteer capacity in the long term, in the very long term, in the wake of, the, of this four big challenges we just discussed and, and maybe some other challenges as well. Uh, a note on Wikimedia Ukraine's role. Now, in the early day, uh, we have been, in the early days, we were facilitating direct help to community members uh, immediately affected by the war. And today we have switched more to de delivering on our core, pro core programs, on our uh, strategy, uh, uh, on our pre-war strategy, which was of course adjusted to the war, but 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 not altered entirely. And uh, we have been helping indirectly. So for example, giving people new skills, motivating them, even a scholarship to Wikimania is quite a boost, training educators, developing the educational program, and so on. Uh, to be honest, I would allow us to do more, but we are also strained, right? We also have a lot of challenges. Wikimedia Ukraine faces uh, the same challenges as the wider community, as I've just discussed. So how can you help? How can people in this room or people watching this online help? Uh, the most accessible way to everyone is to help showcase Ukraine as part of your Wikimedia contributions. You can join Wikimedia Ukraine's annual cultural diplomacy month, uh, which is held every year and which will be held in the spring of 2025 next. Uh, or you can just write or contribute in about Ukraine in other ways also. Uh, and as a next step, you can help organize this work in your community. Uh, Wikimedia Ukraine supports Wikimedia Ukraine supports a lot of edited ones, a lot of training events for Ukrainians abroad. As you can see from the Netherlands uh, to, to the Philippines. Uh, and, uh, and if you have some resources to organize this event, we would be quite great. Uh, but of course, there is more to life than Wikipedia. Uh, what, what are some other ways you can help? Uh, if you can afford it, of course, uh, and I realize many people cannot, but if you can uh, uh, donate money to help Ukrainian Wikip Wikimedians, there is one initiative to help document and uh, to to document and therefore help formally prosecute Russian war crimes by a team from Kharkiv, including Wikimedia Sergei Petrov. We had a story about him in the signed post in 2022, which you can read. Uh, 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 there is a link in the slides. Uh, you, you can you can open the slides afterwards and go to the link. And you can you can learn more about the initiative and you can support it financially. Uh, you can support energy independence, right? I just mentioned that power blockouts is the single biggest region reason why people cannot contribute to okay, cannot contribute as much. Uh, so ensuring work during power outages is possible, but it is costly. If you can uh, support that financially, you can reach out to me to discuss. There are my contacts uh, on the slide. And you, if you can support defense defense efforts, you can if you can support Wikimedians in the army. You, uh, please also reach out to me to discuss that. 
uh, you can donate the, you can donate your time and expertise donate your ideas to help ukrainian wikimedians wikimedia ukraine's work and there are some specific ways to do it so for example wikilaus monuments in ukraine is looking for international volunteers we'll be looking for international volunteers uh, if you're interested in that uh, reach out to via email address below uh, but there are much more ways there are there are there are uh, many more, more ways, including ways we haven't thought of yet. So you can uh, also reach out to me to discuss if you're interested. And, and then, of course, uh, nothing would be more helpful than for Ukraine to, to, to win this war and to end this war. Uh, so if you can help Ukraine more broadly, speak out, voice your support, which is quite important uh, as, uh, as international attention veins. Uh, you if you can donate money more broadly, either for defense uh, purposes or for humanitarian support. If you can afford it, uh, that would be quite helpful as well. Uh, thank you so much. If you have any question, if you have uh, a couple of minutes now, I would be happy to answer questions. If not, please uh, reach out to me online via my uh, contacts, which are on this slide. Okay, can someone uh, let me know hello. whether we still have... Yeah. Hello. Is it, sorry, uh, hello there. Uh, first of all, I understand yeah. you're presenting remotely. I'm just thankful you're here at all, remotely or otherwise. And um, one aspect of Wikipedia is sourcing, finding sources, and there's been a great challenge to that environment between data centers being knocked offline and certain forms of content being outlawed by Moscow. And so I'm wondering, um, are you continuing to run into issues finding sources um, or you know getting maintaining the integrity of the links already in your articles and um, I ask because I work at the Internet Archive and we work on this sort of thing um, improving reference integrity on Wikipedia um, and I guess my question is is there anything more we can do uh, thank you that's a really great question uh, I, I would say I would say we haven't had a lot of issues with um, maintaining the integrity of sources in Ukraine because um, there is no uh, government censorship of the internet in Ukraine, right? There might be more issues with that uh, in Russia where there is quite a lot of government censorship blocking of the website. Uh, so so I, uh, I wouldn't say uh, that we have, uh, that this problem has room to large in Ukraine, but I would be, uh, quite happy and interested to discuss whether there is something we can do together. Probably we can uh, we can connect after this session. Any others? Okay, then I think that's it. I think that's it then. That's it. Yeah, thanks. Thanks very much Thank for you. your presentation. <laughs>